<sighs> Good morning from Lake Como Basin. Uh, heading up to Little Bear. Just right there. This is the gully be going up right there. Uh, so I made it to about a mile and a half before the lake and the storm just kept getting worse and so uh, I ended up just setting up camp right in the log cabin ruins uh, but yeah it wasn't too bad of a walk the rest of the way I would have liked to have made it the whole way but I didn't so time to find my way up to the ridge line and then follow the ridge and then head to the south of the ridge and then up into the hourglass to the summit. Depending on how I feel after that, I'll decide if I want to try to do Blanca and Ellingwood today or not. All right, made it to the top of the gully. It's a uh, pretty loose scree some places, some slippery rock. Definitely wasn't the easiest thing to get up. Now I think we're going to kind of stay just to the south of the ridge a little bit. Looks like there's Karens to follow. Walking up just the south side of the ridge. Ridge is right there. Trails right here. Not too hard to follow. Sometimes the uh, sometimes the Karens can be hard to see because they really blend in well. But so far so good. Beautiful view of the lakes at this notch here. All right, starting to get to the next climbing part. Exciting. All right, made it to the hourglass. Looks class three right now. So follow along there. There is a trail that goes up here, kind of hard to follow. Just everything just camouflages into the background. So, I'm gonna start working my way up this hourglass. Okay, so, with all this water running down, I went up this part right here. It was, uh, I don't know, it seemed a little harder than class four to me, but I bet if you stayed closer to the ropes, it would stay class four. I just, trying to avoid this slick rock, a lot of it's just so wet. Got to be really careful. I can see the anchor right there, so almost there. Haven't seen anybody else on this mountain yet. Here's the anchor right here. I mean, it looks in pretty good condition. Pretty good, yeah. So last little bit. For the summit. Okay, top of the hourglass here, almost at the summit. And you can see here why it's so dangerous. When you get to the top, you got all this loose talus, and if you kick it free, it just like a funnel goes right down into that gully. So, luckily, I'm all alone here. Maybe there'll be some people behind me, but I haven't seen any. But I'll still be careful not to kick down any rocks. Almost there. There we are, summit of Little Bear. A tough one. You know, the slippery rock made it a kind of sketchy. <coughs> Wow. There's the very intimidating 
traverse over to Blanca, Ellingwood Point, and there's uh, Lindsay right there where I was yesterday. So from about a mile and a half before the lakes, it took me three hours, a total of 5.7 kilometers. So yeah, I guess if you want to do the traverse, you got to get used to exposure. Like this, just sheer cliff faces, either side. Incredible view of the lakes. So, I will not be doing the traverse, though it would have been nice to do it. I just haven't researched it enough yet, especially to feel confident about going across it solo. Uh, so, if I want to do Blanca and Ellingwood today, it means I go all the way back down, up through the lakes, up to the other basin, and then I a long way. But it's uh, 7.30 right now. I'll just judge. I think I should have until about 2 p.m. to climb, so it takes me about two hours to get down, and it's 9.30. Yeah! Might be able to go for it. We'll see how my energy level is feeling then. <sighs> Goodbye. Here's looking down the hourglass. I'll probably be using the ropes some to assist my descent. Uh, I don't know how much I'll put my whole weight on it, but I'll always have my feet and other hand as a backup. Just kind of use the rope as like a if I slip type thing. Going down is going to be pretty sketchy. Okay, so here's that little crux section. I mean, I pretty much went right up here on the left. Pretty much vertical. I mean, mostly vertical, not straight vertical, but so maybe just class four plus. I don't know. If you stay to the right here and stay in the gully, <coughs> it's going to be wet, but it stays much it's much easier climb but almost out of the hourglass and then back to safety so while descending the road our rope i already found a very frayed spot you know it's it's about to break so gotta be can't can't trust these ropes uh, at least going down i can kind of really look at it and I can uh, see if it has a weak spot before I put my weight on it. Climbing up, you'd be, it'd be really risky to put your full weight on that rope. Okay, I made it back across the traverse, back to the gully, which I'm really not looking forward too much to go down, considering how slippery it is. Got my poles though, and uh, yeah. A traverse, it takes a while just because it's so hard to figure out which where the trail is. If it wasn't for the Karens, the trail would be impossible to find. And even with the Karens, it's still really hard. All right, down we go. All right, back onto the Blanca Trail. That's a successful summit of Little Bear. There it is right there. Yeah. Uh, it's 9.10. I haven't seen a cloud yet, so that's all a really good sign. So I'm going to go for Blanca. Might take me... Hopefully I can do it in two hours. I really have no idea. Just have to... Start going for it, and then find out. All right, at the top of Blanca. Uh, I didn't really film much of climbing up Blanca. The thing is, I really want to get Ellingwood Point today, and the clouds are starting to form, so I probably got about three hours left, maybe. So, not gonna dilly-dally. Though I will show the traverse, little bear right there, and the gnarly 
gnarly traverse. Maybe one day I'll get there. All right, time to find my way across to Ellingwood. Okay, I've made it onto the traverse between Blanca and Ellingwood Point. It looks like I thought I was just going to be off trail the whole time, but it looks like there's a trail with Karens and everything for the traverse. So I'm pretty excited about that. Doing this is going to save me <coughs> some very valuable time. It's 11, 1125 right now. Uh, the clouds are forming kind of like how they were at about 9. 30 or 10 yesterday and started storming at like 3 but it could very rapidly change so I have to be ready to descend luckily it's a short traverse here until it meets back up with the, the main trail looking back at the traverse as you see well defined trail lots of Karens well placed Makes route finding real easy. Now, just like that, we are on Ellingwood. Oh yeah, that's a good traverse. All right, almost there. There's a little bear starting to spout some clouds. Oop, Blanca, my God. And a Whitney right there too, looks amazing. There's the ridge between Whitney and Blanca. Looks totally doable. Finish this off and get down before the clouds get too scary. All right, made it to the top of Ellingwood Point. Third peak of the day, little bear right there where we started. Blanca right there. Lindsay right there where I was yesterday. Man, the view from here is amazing. Blanca is one of the most awesome looking peaks. You can even see the crater lake down there. But I'm not gonna hang out here too much. The clouds are getting worse. So, time to go down. Back at the basin, one last good look at Blanca there. Dellingwood over there. One last little seat part back to get to get back down to Lake Como, and then uh, and it's just uh, back to my campsite, a mile and a half down the road. Long day, but a good day. Bighorns. Back down the road we go. This, I walked up this part in the dark, so I didn't get to catch these awesome views. Although, walking up I got to see a bunch of, uh, a bunch of lights from the town there. So, amazing day. Really tired. Not, not as tired as I was walking down that road after doing the Crest Stones. But still, a long and hard day. It's, it's already been nine hours and 15 minutes. Probably got another 30 minutes to get back to my tent, which I'm really hoping has not been destroyed by bears. Fingers crossed.